sleep. Why is it even important? Why did I drag my lazy chair out into the waiting room? Let's talk about it. Today, we're gonna to talk about sleep. The reason why I'm talking about sleep in such depth, and we're gonna to, to take some time today to talk about it, is because I believe it's part of the five things that you need to pay attention to on a daily basis just to make sure that you're doing the best to live your best life, okay? So my five things are food, sleep, we're talking about it now, exercise, detoxification and mindfulness behavior but just sleep because each one of these it's it's so much information on each one of those five things I just want to break them down as easily and as simply as possible using some of the world's greatest and highest resources to share with you so that you can make your own decisions because you're still gonna to have to make your own decisions right but let's talk about some sleep all right so all right, I brought my pillow from home. It is uh, it's a great pillow. It's a bamboo pillow. And, um, but I can't do the whole thing in the bamboo pillow. I can't, I can't do it, all right? I brought my lazy chair into the waiting room to make sure that I could be as close as possible to my friend's painting, The Victory by a Woo. That's, that's my friend and he's a famous Atlanta artist, okay? Here we go. I read this book by this doctor named Rahul Jandiel. Dr. Rahul Jandiel is a dual trained brain surgeon and neuroscientist at City of Hope Cancer Center in Los Angeles. Dr. Jandiel is the author of 10 academic books, that's a lot, and more than 100 papers published in peer reviewed journals. He looks like a movie star. He looks like uh, a Hollywood, he looks like the guy in Nip Tuck, if you remember Nip Tuck, that was a great show. The doctor wrote this book in order to help enhance our brain function, okay? And the reason why one would want to enhance the brain function is to live better. Let's just keep it simple, okay? But he wrote this beautiful chapter on sleep, and I just wanted to share it with you, okay? So being a medical doctor, even, even a dentist, doctor of dental surgery, okay? It's many, many hours staying up, studying, having to go to class, in some case having to go to work, all right? And still maintain your proper GPA and get everything that you need to get, okay? Well, with MDs, I think they take it, it's even harder because they have sleepless nights and they have to be on the floor doing their calls, doing their, their residencies, okay? So this doctor has a very good understanding of how lack of sleep can really impair function. And really, what does sleep do anyway? Like, why would you sleep anyway, okay? Well, sleep is the time that your subconscious gets to do all of the functions that it cannot do while you're talking or listening or awake or riding your bicycle, okay? It just, it just can't, it can't do those functions that needs to happen, those sleep time functions, all right? So sleep would be called a firestorm of brain activity, okay? So instead of taking in new information, um, it's occupied with defragging, uh, deleting things and storing prior days activities for other recall, okay? And um, basically, it'll even give you a movie, a 3D movie of yourself with you as the star in the movie, sleep. So, the doctor kind of starts out with this story about this young lady, 18 years old, who was in a head-on traffic accident. She was a passenger and he arrived on the uh, intensive care unit and there were many, many patients that needed his attention, okay? And because there were so many patients that needed his attention, he only really had time to deal with the one worst one. That's what 
his time in the hospital could do. So they had already done some things for her. They had her sedated. They had taken out pieces of her brain because uh, in the accident, um, she had severe brain injury. So the airbag came out and, and with such an abrupt stop, her brain crushed against the front part of her cranium and neurons and, and dendrites, which are just things that are in the brains, they basically exploded like balloons. So now she's having brain hemorrhaging, all right? So uh, the pressure of the brain should be between one and 15 um, milligrams of mercury of pressure, okay? That's what it should be between, I'm sorry, between seven and 15, all right? Hers was above 20. And this is after they took out sections of her brain so that her brain could swell a little bit more to take the pressure off, okay? Well, when the doctor came in into this dire situation, he said to the operating nurse or the nurse that was watching her, give her pentobarbital, all right? That is just a barbiturate that makes you basically flatline, like you're dead, okay? And with all of the activities in the brain that happened when you're asleep, because her brain was injured, she was in a sleep-like state with all these other drugs, but her brain was still super active. So this pentobarbital basically made her brain less active and gave it the time that it needed in order to chill out, no activities at all, let's do this. And for like three months, Long story short, she survived. There are so many activities that have to happen while we are sleeping, which is why a couple things like we have to give ourselves the proper amount of time to sleep. Six to eight hours. Can't really sleep too little, can't sleep too much. Did you know that every living animal sleeps? Everything sleeps, even jellyfish that have no brains at all, or no brain looking things like brains, they do a sleep or a sleep-like state also. Ants sleep, okay? The queen bee ant, she gets like 10 hours of sleep, eight to 10 hours. But the worker bees, they get half of that. But you know what happens to the worker bees? They take power naps. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Sometimes you just have to get that nap in. That's what I did in dental school. Sometimes it's just like, oh, nothing's going on. Power nap. What about when you're a dad, okay? The baby's okay, everybody's okay, nothing's on fire, power nap. That right there is what makes it so you can do the functions that cannot happen when you're awake. All right, so as we tap in deeper to this, let me put my glasses on, okay? Because you know what? I want to see you better. That's what I want to do. Oh, there you are. I can see you way better now. This, this, this is a picture of the doctor, okay? Dr. Jean Diel. He seems to be true to his word, okay? And he seems to be, besides super well-read and scholarly, he seems to really be passionate about it, okay? And it's, it's really through his passion in me watching him discuss neurochemistry and, and neurosurgery, even reading the book, that I was like, you know what, this guy is the real deal. The one thing that I love about him is that he does not make any absolute statements. Now that's an absolute statement because it could be different from one person to another, from one trauma injury to another. And what works for one person may not work for the other person, okay? But the science, for the most part, holds a center structure, hove, right? that works or that is supposed to give us some kind of guide in this world. Dr. Jean Diel and his passion and the books that he's written, the articles that he's written, please, please check them out yourself if you want more information. The American Journal of Sleep has an actual, has a rules for sleep, okay? and um, what one should, must do. And it seems as though that these rules coincide with the rules in other sources and other places that are the things to do to get the best sleep. 
the number one thing is to keep a consistent schedule. Now, I don't know how you do that. I'm trying to do that myself, even on the weekends. Do it, all right? Uh, it says avoid caffeine in the afternoon or in the evening. Now that makes sense to me, okay? Caffeine is gonna get you up, it's gonna start spiking your juices, that you're up, 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 and then when it's time to go to sleep, you're, you can't because I think it has a very long half-life. I think half-life is what it's called. Um, it goes over eight hours, okay? All right, so here's number three. Now, three is my number. If you go to bed and you try to sleep and it's been like 20 minutes, get out of bed. Stop that. Get, stop the madness. It's not working out, okay? Get out of bed. Don't turn on the lights. Don't go for a jog or anything like that. Just get up and get out of bed, all right? And uh, try it again in another 10, 15 minutes, all right? So uh, here's number four, and it's a good one. It's not, it's not a number three, but it's number four, okay? The bedroom is only for sleep and sex. That's it. Only one thing in the bedroom, two things, or one at a time, right? Definitely just one at a time. But two choices, sleep or sex, okay? Not watching TV in bed, not studying in bed, not, do, not cooking, not eating in bed. Bed is gonna be the sanctuary that you put yourself to be in the zone of we are sleeping like kings and queens, all right? Number five, and limit your exposure to bright sunlight or bright lights in the evening. So light is very, very important in terms of when you get your sleep or when sleep needs to happen. There's another amazing PhD doctor, Dr. Andrew Huberman, okay? Dr. Huberman would say, oh, he's with Huberman Labs. He is another super smart, amazing, amazing, amazing doctor that shares so much of his talents and gifts with the world, but I don't know that everybody gets to see it. So I saw it, so I'm gonna report it to you, all right? So anyway, he said, get up in the morning and get natural sunlight in your eyes. Don't, don't wear sunglasses, let the sun hit your eyes. He says that it's very good to just take a walk in the morning, in the morning light. Something about as your eyes go back and forth as you're walking down the street, it does something to your, to your neurons in your eyes, which is eyes are actually a part of the brain. It's the only part of the brain that we can see it is attached directly to the brain. So let me see your brain. Let me look into your soul. I'm looking into your eyes. Anyway, oh, here's the one that's gonna be super hard for us as our cell phones are attached to us for the most time, for the most part, all of the time. It says, limit your cell phone use. Don't go on, get on your phone. Don't turn on the television. That's the blue lights that get in and they do something with the back of your cornea, which does says something to your brain that says, hey, it's not really time to sleep right now. Dr. Huberman said one hour before you go to sleep in the book, in the American Sleep Society, they say 30 minutes. All right, 30 minutes, that's fine, okay? Anyway, those are the, those are the six things that will help that will really help you get some sleep at night should you have some insomnia or, or something like that. Um, Dr. Jean Diel, uh, that was just one piece of the book that he's come up with called Neuro Fitness that is supposed to help us with our creativity and our performance. And this report comes to you from my heart. That ends my discussion on the chapter in sleep in Dr. Raul Jean Dale's book, Neuro Fitness. I would love to know how you sleep. Do you, do you sleep long enough? Do you sleep with the good quality? Do you have the TV in your bedroom? Anyway, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.